Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Chris Sost, and I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Gig Economy Lounge. Today's episode is going to be all about the ride share ping, the request, the thing that sounds like money. Now, over the past four and a half years that I've been doing rideshare, going on five, there's been quite the evolution in, in the ride request itself. Now, I will say that both companies are, are drastically different when it comes to their algorithms and their technology. And Uber, to a certain extent, has shed some light on their algorithm, but only just little you know, bits and pieces here and there. And they've actually published it in, on their blog on their website. So it's not even like they keep it a secret necessarily. Now, any information that we get from, let's just say Uber support, I don't trust simply because those people don't actually work for Uber. They have no idea how Uber works, nor, you know, should they, because they are obviously nowhere near where Uber technology is, is being deployed and tested and everything else. Now, Uber does a really good job over, over time in stating what they, they are thinking about doing. So Uber's CEO, about eight months ago, came out and said that they are thinking about possibly giving riders the ability to request higher rated drivers at a premium. But they've, they've never indicated that they've ever put that into place so anytime I read on social media somewhere where somebody says that people with higher ratings or higher acceptance rates, you know, get, get you know, more requests or get, you know, uh, get priority requests, I just don't see that in the data. And the reason why I say that is because I have a terrible acceptance rate. Um, some, some may say that I have a terrible rating. I am a 4.90. Um, my acceptance rate currently to date is 55%. However, it normally hovers between 38% and 42%. That seems to be my sweet spot on the acceptance rate. And I can tell you this much right now. I have no problem getting requests, nor do I have any shortage of requests coming in. More importantly, and, and this really speaks to it because I would actually say that it, it is proximity based. Now, they do and they have enlightened us to the fact that they send out what they call silent pings. So AI is learning what we're doing. So they may send out the same exact request to two to three drivers, but in a delayed fashion. And the only reason why they're, they're doing that is to simply cut down on the travel time because certain drivers have certain uh, habits and they don't quite know everything that we're doing. So if you've been sitting, uh, if you're sitting still, for instance, and you've been sitting still for a long period of time, the Uber app doesn't know where you are. You could be inside eating at a restaurant. You could be in the restroom at a convenience store. Heck, you could be at home sleeping. It doesn't know that. The only thing that it does know is that you haven't moved in X amount of time. So in certain instances, it may turn around and send out multiple requests for the same passenger based on these various situational issues. But overall, it is proximity based. I have yet to see any actual proof uh, to the contrary, like actual proof. Now, when, when I was driving full, full time, we, you know, we used to test theories and I would grab five or six rideshare drivers, put them in the same exact area. And at that point in time, I think I had like a 4.81 uh, star rating and everybody else was far better. 4.96, 4.92, blah, 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 blah. You know, the list goes on. Everybody was better than me. But yet I was still able to get the request that was getting sent out because I was in fact the closest driver. Now, I will say that, you know, Uber has turned around and it is, has also enlightened us to, that they are... Uh, they favor moving drivers. 
And this goes back to they don't know what you're doing if you're sitting still. They don't know whether you fell asleep. I already went through all the, the possibilities. However, when they see a car, when there is one car that is headed in the direction of the pickup request or the potential pickup request, and there is a driver just in front of it that is parked, depending on the situation, the request may actually go to the driver that's moving, not the one that's stationary. And that's just because the algorithm figures that the closest driver in terms of getting there, in terms of time, is the driver that's moving. Now, they've also hinted on in their, in their writings or in their blogging, if you will, that they take into account traffic situations. So let's just say you are closer technically to the pickup, but you are driving in the opposite direction of the pickup. And there is a driver that's technically driving uh, a little bit further away from you, but driving in the direction of the pickup outside of just anomalies in the algorithms. It will go to the driver who is heading towards the passenger. So I, I know I've noticed a drastic decrease. I mean, I very rarely get any pickup requests that are actually behind me. And really to think about it, the only places where that happens is, is outlying uh, like shopping areas. So it's, it's not like in a densely populated area. So there's, there's the, the chance of there being a lot of Uber drivers in that area are, are very low. Now, Lyft's algorithm is much more basic. It is literally proximity to the proximity base. Simple as that. Whoever the heck is closest doesn't matter whether you're moving, not moving. Doesn't matter whether you're picking your nose. Or, or fixing your hair, doesn't really matter what you're doing, closest driver gets it. And I've, I've had the privilege of, of being able to test these theories over the years because I've always believed in building a book of clientele. Now, my clients either text me um, or text me or even, I, I got a few that even send me Facebook messages. Uh, a few of them call me. But week in and week out, I'm giving them rides. And we always use either the Uber or the Lyft app, whichever one they want to use. And every single time, without fail, they, you know, they request me right as I get there, you know, right to their house, and I get the request every single time. It's, it's, not, even, it's not even difficult to do so. Now, I will say that these folks live out in the suburbs and we're heading to the airport. There will be slightly... Bigger challenges, if you will, when you are in highly dense areas. So if you are in downtown, um, any type of any type of place where where there's tall buildings, and I, I've I've started to to really I, I like to reverse engineer why things happen. That's what I really want to do, and so I, I like to get out all the other variables outside the fact that you know there's there's the conspiracy that Uber and Lyft are out to to get drivers. And they're out to fuck drivers over. So there's two really interesting variables that nobody takes into account when talking about the ping and who gets it and who is actually considered the closest. And that is cell phone tower, your cell phone carrier. If you are pinging off of a tower that is further away than, you know, the passenger, or heck, if it's in the polar opposite direction, of where the passenger is, is, or the request is coming from, chances are the GPS is, is actually showing you closer to that tower rather than where you're actually at. And this is going to, this is going to weigh heavily on or depend heavily on who your carrier is. So obviously I, I truly believe, and I don't even have Verizon, um, but I do believe that overall they, they provide a, a better coverage map. I believe they have more towers which creates a, a greater accuracy for GPS. I use T-Mobile. I hear AT&T is good. Um, Sprint, God bless you guys. I mean, I, th I think if you're in metropolitan areas, it's great. But like once you get outside the city, it's, uh, it's, it's slim pickings on, 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 on signals. So this, this is one of the things that a lot of people overlook when they're trying to, to figure out you know, who is considered, quote unquote, the closest available driver to a ride request. And it's something that you can't really measure because you don't know which tower you're pinging off of. 
It's not like your phone says, hey, I'm pinging off of a tower 1.2 miles southwest of you. You just don't know that. So this is one of those underlying variables that I believe has a great effect on, on who receives the request because it's based off of that cell phone ping or that cell phone tower ping. That's what dictates where you're actually at on the Uber map or on the Lyft map. So I, I've read a lot on social media about, you know, there's drivers that are, that are closer um, and I still got the request. I would say that there's, there's a multitude of other reasons why you would get the request over them. Number one, first and foremost, there's a lot of drivers out there like me who turn down requests. I turn down requests for all kinds of reasons. Who knows? I might, I'm, you know, I might want to stop. I might want to send a text. I might need to make a phone call. Um, uh, it may be coming from an, an area that is notorious for short rides and I just don't feel like dealing with it. It's possible. On top of that, then you have the, the cell phone carrier issue, uh, the tower pinging issue. And, you know, there's, there's a whole other, uh, there is a wild card. Going to talk about it right now, which is the destination filters. Oh, that's another variable. Guess what? If I'm sitting there, right, I could be sitting right next to a passenger within one minute. And you could be 10 minutes away. And we're the only two drivers on the map. If I'm not headed in their direction, especially on Uber, you're going to get the request, not me. And I'm technically quote unquote closer. So there's a ton of variables that go into who is the closest available driver. So I don't really want to make this episode long, but I did want to address this, especially for new drivers. Uber and, and Uber, maybe not Lyft, but Uber really, really is, is driving efficiency when it comes to their dispatch system. So they favor drivers that are in motion. Um, they favor, you know, uh, better quality um, carrier systems or, you know, phone carriers, uh, the ones with the most towers in a given area. I do not know how to research that for your given area, but I'm sure there's a way to figure out how many towers a company has in your city. So that way you can figure out which company may be best to have. Um, obviously if you're looking for more on-demand requests, do not use your destination filters because that will greatly reduce, um, your, your on-demand requests. And more importantly, just, just think like an efficient, uh, computer would, right? So if, if you know that, let's just say that downtown where everybody goes for the bar crowd is going to be leaving. And, and the vast majority that go downtown because of population wise and the way a city is laid out lives north. I repeat, north of downtown. In order to position yourself the best, you may want to be on the south side of downtown facing in the direction of north. So that way the Uber algorithm look at you in a more favorable light. Why? Because you are south of the pickup locations. Your car is heading in the direction of where people are going. Thus, Uber believes that you will deliver a better customer experience than somebody that is parked to the north has to come south to turn around and go north again. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If, if you'd like, leave your comments down below in the comments section. Let me know what you think. This is a highly uh, contested topic. You know, I can only go based off of, off of the experiments that I've ran. Um, I, I don't, like I said, I do not listen to Uber support because they don't work anywhere near, you know, Uber headquarters or work anywhere near, or even have remote access to the computer engineers at Uber who dictate how the algorithm works. So until Uber decides to shed some more light in their blog on how AI is working to maximize or make more efficient their dispatch you know, system, this is going to remain a topic of conversation that is based off of opinions and primarily opinions only outside of the little tidbits of information that we've been given. So thank you again so much for tuning in and I will talk to you guys later.